Hello everyone and welcome to La Vida Football. I'm Luis Laureano. I'm a UEFA B licensed coach currently living and coaching in Germany. Today's video is a tactics video on 7v7 football and we will be working and looking into the 141 formation. So let's take a look at the formation, the 141. So starting with the positions here, we have a center back and there is only one center back in this formation because we focus the depth in the midfield. So in the midfield, we have four players and the four players are made up of two wings, an outside left midfielder and an outside right midfielder, a defensive midfielder and a center midfielder. I have two wingers, right? I have one defensive midfielder and one center midfielder, but depending on the type of player, you have this can easily be different formation using different types of players so for example let's take a look at what this can also look like now if you don't have wingers or offensive minded players then you can do a left back and a right back of course this is based on the type of players you have because fullbacks can play on the outside by themselves nowadays of course the players are required to go up and down the pitch in the 11 side game so having wingers or having fullbacks the only difference is probably the skill on you know one-on-one -on -one situations or 2v1 situations or attacking situations but the running the endurance the physical demands can be handled by both type of players right it's just probably if you have wingers rather than fullbacks you both players probably just have a little bit more skill but on the other hand the fullbacks are better defensive players normally but you would expect your fullbacks to be you know more defensive minded of course and have the thought of defending in the back of their mind a lot more than attacking or going up the pitch whereas the wingers might have have, you know going up the pitch be more of a priority and wanting to play more so in a one two three formation rather than a one or one formation or even a eight three two one formation that's just something that you as a coach or if you are a player have to keep in mind that you know those players will have different ideas in their mind okay so here we have three different types of players so we have a center midfielder who normally is in charge of the center and is a true midfielder we have the option of having a defensive midfielder as well you can also have have two defensive midfielders taking up the center or you can have a defensive midfielder and an attacking midfielder so most likely if you have this combination they might be playing staggered rather than on the same line if you have a center midfielder and an attacking midfielder then it could be that your center midfielder would be a little bit more centralized and your attacking midfielder again staggered a little bit higher up supporting the forward a lot more but still having the responsibility to come back this all depends on the type of players you have i personally don't really care which players are there because at the end of the day they both have to attack and defend especially on the seven aside game so the roles are just for players to get comfortable playing in those positions while at the same time caring for their skills and their abilities but other than that you can basically call these positions whatever you like and again these two players can be more or less on the same line it's just the center midfielder is probably going to be more responsible of distributing the ball whereas the defensive midfielder is going to be the one to support the center back a lot more frequently and up top we have the forward he's the lone or she is the lone striker up on top and essentially that just comes with responsibility to be offensive minded and to be the player to create those scoring opportunities and more often than not be the player that stays higher up the pitch and this player should have technical skill to drop the ball back in order for this player to be effective of course they need to be good at finishing but also at getting crosses from the wingers getting passes from the midfield and then just simply dropping it back let's say for example the center midfielder passes to the forward and moves up the pitch even though that looks like a simple pass it's not so easy when you have pressure and you have the players moving around so that their forward needs to be able to do these type of actions or even getting a pass from the midfield and then passing it all the way out to the winger going up the pitch so these things are important for the forward essentially initiating the attack and allowing the attack to progress so if we take a look at this formation you will be able to, to notice that there's a lot of gaps in this formation so the other formations have a better balance but this one allows a lot of space which may not look good but defensively this formation is quite strong because if we take a look here the center is definitely well covered at any given point you have two players there defending the center and getting past two players in the seven versus seven game is challenging okay and with the center back there this can easily become three players essentially covering and defending the center of the pitch and then 
then when the wingers tuck in, the space that we see here in yellow on the outsides won't matter as much because we have the center well covered. And if the team knows how to shift together and move together, then the gaps that we see on the outsides will essentially be not insignificant, but not as important. It's when the players don't shift together and leave the center open. This is when it can be dangerous. When, for example, the gap here is unprotected, uncovered and left open, then our center back is vulnerable to get beat, especially if the opponents are playing in a formation where there are two forwards involved. So just a few things to consider. Now, this formation, like many formations, are adaptable. So like I said earlier, we have the wingers here that are going up and down the pitch. But if these were left and right backs, these players would have that defensive mentality, meaning this formation can easily become a 3-2-1. And if these two players are more defensive minded, then of course you have more defensive support. But of course, this will take away from the attack. So it would be nice if you have at least one more offensive minded and one defensive minded. And then, you know, you can have a bit of a balance because the offensive minded can essentially go up and then your defensive minded player can be the one to stay back with the center back. And then you can have a 2-3-1 on attack or essentially attacking with four players. And then the other player wouldn't have to go up as much. But that's not to say that they wouldn't need to attack because if the attack is happening only on one side, at one point the opponents will notice that and they will essentially use more of their energy to stop the side where the ball is being played and where it's going to be attacked. So what are the different variations of this formation? Well, on attack, if we push up the wingers, then we play in a one, two, three, okay? And this gives us three players on top, a center back who can essentially initiate the play, two midfielders or two players in the middle. And you can see the distribution is, is awesome. I would love to get to this point with this formation, right? Because if you're a little staggered here, for example, forward drops back a little bit. If there's enough space, direct ball to the forward, plays it back to the center midfield, and then goes out wide to one of the wings. Instead of going from center back to winger, we use the winger or this player as the fourth player. So here, if our goal is to pass it to the center midfielder, then yes, of course we can do that. But then the pressure will go directly to that person. But if we use the forward to drop it back to the center midfielder, then we have a little bit of recovery time. So the opponents would have to get back into position to be able to adapt to the center midfield having the ball. And then the center midfield can essentially play it out wide, either to the right or if the winger on the other side is a little far back and is expecting the pass, then they would drop back a little bit and then go forward in order to create a little bit of space and have the defender kind of come off their line a little bit to defend. And so we have the opponents in a 3-2-1. So what I mean is if our winger drops back a little bit and the right back doesn't cover or doesn't push up, then of course the ball can go straight to the winger's feet and then they can do a 1v1 here or wait for the forward to come in to do a two versus one quick wall pass and then go up the pitch. So how do we get the pass to the forward? Well, there's ways to do that, right? We give a pass here, get the number eight to move off their line, pass it back to the center back, it gives time for the center midfield to open up a little bit, have our number nine creep up from that side. The number six also put pressure and the center midfielder should do a little movement, essentially like a, a feint that they will pass directly to the striker so that they try to close the gaps here, go back to the center back. This Now that these two players are out, then the number eight will try to put that pressure. In that moment, the pass comes, the forward is in motion. Once the pass is made, this will happen. So the, of course, the three players in the midfield will try to get the ball from the forward. The forward will essentially do like a, a one touch to the center midfielder. Okay, so now this is the point that I was talking about, okay? So we take a look at what's happening here, then this is important. If the number three learned that ball has been going to the winger's foot, then next time they will already try to anticipate this action again. And when that happens, then this is what I was talking about earlier. Now the space is available in this section. Okay? And this is the section that we want to attack. This is the section that we want to exploit. When our center midfielder notices this action, then it's a pass in that space. Winger has the advantage because they know the space that they created and they know that the center midfielder is going to make that pass. And then at that point is a foot race, isn't it? Essentially three players versus most likely two players. So a three versus two in a seven v seven. I'll take my chances, right? So you can do the pass out wide to the winger to their feet. And if the fullback bites and we can pin that player, then we will have created that space. If we create the space, we give the ball and we go towards goal. But the other variation that I discussed was that the center back plays to the forward, the forward plays it to the center midfielder. And the fourth player now becomes the winger on the right side where the ball already is. So when this happens, of course, the players are going to 
going to be shifting at least the center back and in this case the number two the left back they will be shifting a little bit and as soon as the center midfielder starts moving their body to the right then this right back will already know okay then that would be a difficult pass to be getting switched to the left side when we have the play here we have a couple options actions that can be used but well, we have the overlap so the overlap is center midfielder passes to the winger and as you can see there's a space between the player and the sideline and that space is used by the center midfielder to overlap the winger and then the winger can now decide whether they pass the ball or they dribble in or they pass to the forward who should also be helping out and if this happens then the center midfielder should also anticipate a pass from the forward that's if the pass to the forward occurs but either way that space is there so that is one action that can be used as a tactical attacking action another one is the center midfielder has the ball the winger instead of creating such a large space behind them they spread out to the touchline beforehand receive the pass from the center midfielder they have some pressure and then the center midfielder uses this time to run right in front of the winger creating a little bit of space and time so that the number two has a bit of a disadvantage for a split second so in the time that they're running there is a point where the defender cannot see what's happening so in this time the winger can start going to the inside or prepare their pass quickly to the center midfielder who is running and doing a front run right so a run in front of the winger also known as an underlap right so we have the overlap that's happening from behind and then the underlap that's happening in front okay but either way both can be used as an attacking action during a game so that is how we can attack so the wingers can be up and we can attack in a one two three another way we can attack is having the defensive midfielder stay with the center back and then having a two one three and while this might look like it's more defensive it actually is meant for us to be able to spread the six and the eight or the two midfielders from the opponents because if we have two players in the back then it's easier to move the forward and one of the midfielders and then essentially also the other midfielder right because then if the ball goes to this player the defensive midfielder who is now a center back for example or playing in line with the center back then that player will essentially be taking away two players here the center midfielder is in a one-on-one -on -one situation in the middle but having two players covering here and one player covering there then we have the center back and the winger who are open to receive a pass directly from the defensive midfielder or a pass that's passed to the center midfielder and then the center midfielder making the pass to either the winger or the center back okay but this has to be done quickly because again the center midfielder is a one-on-one -on -one situation with one center midfielder putting pressure from behind and with this defensive midfielder having two players then it's either go to center midfielder or if the forward and the center midfielder do well to cover then of course we always have the option of going back to the goalkeeper and then the goalkeeper can be the one to restart there giving the pass to the center back who should be opening up which is why i made this line behind the center back and not to the center back these things are happening all very quickly and the passes should be done very quickly because really fast so we need to adapt to that the game essentially moves by now let's take a look at the attack from the opponents and how it would look defending in the one for one and how we adapt so for the opponents we can just stay with the three two one but i'll also look at the changes that occur if we are playing against a two three one as well so playing against a three two one we have here a good balance because the forward even though they are in a numerical disadvantage playing against essentially three players it's not necessarily to defend and try to take the ball right away of course if that happens great but if not then it's okay that's not necessarily the target here but more so that they start the defensive actions and that is essentially steering the game to one side closing a pass to at least one of the midfielders by going in this position for example the forward covers the pass to the number three the number eight and allows the pass to the number six but we are in a position to cover the situation there like this shifting together is important and because the number six is well covered the winger can be in a position to cover closer to the number two if the number two drops all the way back then the winger doesn't necessarily need to follow because that is dangerous they would leave this gap here and this can be exploited if we get too close to the number two the number two or even a quick run to the number nine if they get the ball there and nobody else is covering the center back would cover and then that would leave this gap here open as well also dangerous if the number two goes a little too far back then it's okay then we can allow that pass to happen but shifting over and restarting from there okay so we can defend in the one for one that is possible because we do have a good balance against the three two one now let's take a look at what changes occur if we are playing against a one two three 
leave let's say the opponents are now attacking with three players what that does to us is our wingers will then have to drop back and play in a three two one okay so then that's really the only thing that happens is that our wingers drop back and they play next to the center back so that is a formational change but again only defensively if we are to recover the ball then we just notice that there are big gaps on both sides so that's great for our forward because if we are to recover the ball then we can run out to, to the side where the ball was recovered and then essentially start the attack there and in this particular situation then it would be the defensive midfielder or the center midfielder who need to start helping the forward on the attack okay so that is if we are playing against a one three two but if we're playing against a a one three two so then here we have a different situation we can still play with the one for one that is still possible but dangerous because obviously the center back has two players okay and the reason i say we can play in this formation is only if we are expecting our forward to do a full-on press where giving the pass to one of these two players is not even possible because obviously in order for the number four or the center back from the opponents to get to the point where they are right now they would have needed to push the ball forward through some build-up play in order to get there but once they are there then our forward can essentially put pressure and then force the player the center back to either pass back or to the sides there to the number three or to the number two on the other side okay but when that happens if the number four cannot manage that pass to the number eight or number nine and they pass to the outside then here's what happens winger shifts over defensive midfielder shifts over center midfielder shifts over and the winger who is on the other side drops back so that we're back to even numbers in the back so that is one tactical move that you can make or because your defensive midfielder is used to defending then you essentially give them the role to be the player to help the center back and this is always an option to have the defensive midfielder drop back it's just more natural for them as they are a player that tends to be back anyways and again this is also dependent on the players that you have so if we have two wingers then we might not want them to have the responsibility to cover a number nine or an attacking midfielder for example so we give the duty to the defensive midfield that's it for this video we got some attacking actions that we can use we saw how we can defend in this formation it is possible to defend in the one for one and there are some formations that we're playing against that would require us to adapt but essentially with this formation it's possible some simple movements exchanging some players to different positions but nothing too crazy it's all possible so that's it if you guys have any comments questions or concerns comment that in the comment section below i hope you liked it and if you did kick that like button thank you for supporting my channel let me know if you guys want me to do another video with the 7v7 or the 9v9 game if not let me know if you want me to do an updated version on the 11 aside game that's it for now thank you guys for watching i'll see you guys next time ciao